Welcome everybody to our Thera class for a Monday morning. Let's get started. So sit in your chair. I know you already have a little wedge, so your, your hips are slightly above your knees. Sit up tall. Begin to become aware of your breath. Taking a nice deep breath, filling that whole lung capacity. And as you exhale, soften a little bit, feel that slightly softening, especially of your shoulders, maybe your neck. Inhale, notice the breath coming in and filling your lungs. Maybe you'll press slightly into your heels as you inhale. And as you exhale, soften and relax a bit. So let's take those hands and just move them a little bit in ways that feel good to you. Stretch the fingers, relax, stretch and relax. And we'll do uh, the tapping with our feet in a moment. But first, just bring your awareness to your seat. Squeeze those glutes for a moment. Or my seat. Oh, I forgot to mute you guys. I need to mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're good. <laughs> okay, I, I liked hearing you, but the recording isn't going to be very good with everybody away. So let's squeeze those glutes again for a moment. So squeeze the gluteal muscles and notice how it lifts you a little taller. And as you exhale, soften. So we're breathing with awareness again. And again, inhale, squeeze those glutes. Feel like you're squeezing the muscles that you're sitting on and it's lifting you up a little higher. And as you exhale, soften. Take your hands, shake them out gently again, just however it feels good for you to give them a little shake. And then bring your hands to your back. You might need to lean forward a little bit and just give your back a little rub. So maybe your back has some healing energy that can move into your hands and your hands can move some healing energy uh, into your back. Just feel that slight transference of energy as you rub your back any amount. How does that feel? Now, you're probably hunching over a little bit. So let's, let's bring those hands to the sides. And then to the lower edge of the rib cage and just feel that rib cage there and anchor it in. As you breathe, you can feel it moving a bit. Just feel that. And then release those arms, shake them out a little bit. Give yourself a shoulder roll and let the shoulder roll that fluid motion move all the way from the shoulders down through the fingers. Any amount, just see if you can have a little freedom for your sh uh, shoulders, your elbows, and all the way down to your wrists and fingers. You're all connected. So if you can get your shoulders more in place at home and more flexibility in the shoulder area, maybe your hands will be able to be a little freer too. Just notice as you're moving your shoulders, there is that relationship down your shoulder to your fingers. I have noticed that when I have restrictions in my neck and shoulders, my thumb and um, index finger tend to go numb. So it's all connected, shake it out a little bit. Now let's do our tapping. So sit up nice and tall, feel the length in your spine before we do our tapping. Once again, before we do our tapping, Take those fingers and lengthen your neck a little bit. Give your neck some length. Stretch from the shoulders up the sides of your cervical vertebrae and just lift that skull a bit. And this is one of the best things that I've found for myself. I have more flexibility in my neck just from those stretches. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on both hands and feet today with our tapping. So do a movement that feels good for you in your hands. It could be with the palms facing up like this, 
palms facing down like that, or even to the side. Do what's most comfortable in the moment, and you can change it up during the 30 second interval. Here we go. We're gonna tap our feet and move the hands in a way that feels good as well. So you can either keep them on your thighs and tap them like that, or if you wanna have a little more freedom in the whole arm and hand area, do a little more movement, any amount. Keep breathing, whatever you're doing. Inhaling and exhaling. And there's about 30 seconds or so. So relax now and notice the difference. Notice how it feels to relax. And as you're ready, stretch your legs and also your arms. Each one in turn in a way that feels good. The other leg and the other wrist and hand any way that feels good for you. And then bring those feet forward again, sit up nice and tall. And let's do that again. So for 30 seconds, we're gonna move. Maybe your hands wanna do something different this time. Maybe it's just your fingers that wanna wiggle. You choose how you wanna move your hands, your feet, are tapping, the heels on the floor, the feet are tapping, and the hands can just do whatever feels good for you in the moment. Keep breathing. And that's probably about 30 seconds. Let's relax. Relax as completely as you can. And then stretch those limbs. Again, in ways that feel good for you in this moment. And maybe instead of a stretch for your wrists or your hands, you massage each hand a little bit instead. As you stretch one leg back, and then the other leg back. We're dynamic human beings. We can do all these things all at once. It's kind of amazing. Is this what you call multitasking? Working on your feet and hands at the same time? Maybe a little bit of that. It's all focusing on our body and the connections. So bring your foot forward again, sit up nice and tall. And before we do one more session of tapping, let's do our figure four. If it feels good for you, take your right leg, let that knee bend, lift the ankle to rest above the left knee. Any amount of gentle motion, be gentle here. So you're using your right hand on your right knee. Just feel that slight motion there, keeping the right ankle nice and firm, resting above the left knee. And as you're ready, you can draw both hands to that foot and give that foot a little warmth, a little love, a little healing energy from your hands. Maybe even there's some healing energy coming out of your foot into your hands. Maybe. Keep breathing. Feel the warmth of your hands in your foot. You can move those hands up to the ankle and the shin, up to the knee. And I do hope you like to do this. If you don't like it, there's always something else you can do, I'm sure. You can move the hands up to the hip and give that hip a little healing energy from your hands. And that energy is gonna come back to the knee. Ah, oh, feels good. And back to the ankle and the foot again. If you wanna use a strap, get a strap now and let's stretch this leg out. 
If you want to use your hands, you can just bring that hand to the foot and stretch the leg out. Keep breathing. Feel that relationship that you have developed right here, the arm and the leg, pulling back gently on the leg, even as you push the leg away from your body. So there's that isometric action. You're pulling with your arm and pushing with your leg slightly. Notice how that feels. Wiggle your toes a bit here. And then gently release. Shake that arm out, maybe both arms shake out. And look, my foot looks like a different color. <laughs> Things change when you change your body. Let's see if I can get the uh, same color on my other foot. So now we're going to do the other side, lifting that left ankle to rest above the right foot. Sit up nice and tall. Give that left foot some good healing energy from your hands. And maybe some energy is coming from your foot into your hands to help them heal as well. Keep breathing. Bring that healing energy up your shin and calf to your knee. Up your thigh to your hip. And then down again to the knee. And down again to the ankle and the foot. Keep the ankle nice and strong. And using your strap or your arm, let's stretch this leg out. Keep breathing. Feel that isometric action. Pressing the bones of your legs away from your body and gently pulling back with your arm. Any amount of movement that might feel fun or good in your body, you can do that. But you don't have to, you can just use that isometric internal action. And as you're ready, release that foot back to the floor. Adjust those sits bones so they're nice and squared up to the chair and sit up tall. Notice how you feel. Keep breathing. Let's do one more set of tapping for 30 seconds. Now maybe your hands want to move at a different pace than your feet. Allow that. My wrists don't want to move that fast right now. But my ankles are fine with it. Just do some movement, maybe stretch and relax, stretch and relax the hands. There's nothing that you have to do, but we are kind of focusing a little bit on our hands today. So now let's relax as completely as possible. That was about 40 seconds. How do you feel? Let's stretch the legs back and any amount of stretching for your fingers or your hands that might feel good. Other leg stretches back. Keep breathing. And as you're ready, Sit up tall, bring those shoulders home, let your neck be lengthened, rib cage anchored in, nice tall spine. Let's do some moving mountains now. So let your arms come out to your side and think about keeping a little space between your arms and your body today, just for fun. Now we're gonna do this moving mountain in five increments, just We'll do it seated and then we'll do it again standing. So with an inhale, you can press gently into your heels and bring your arms about here. And then exhale, soften a little bit, but stay in the pose. And then inhale, bring the arms a little bit out farther. Stay there and exhale. 
Inhale a little bit more and begin to feel those palms facing forward now as you exhale, soften. Inhale up. Now maybe your palms are going to rotate towards the midline a little bit here. Exhale, soften in place. Inhale all the way up now, reaching those fingers up towards the ceiling. And this time as you exhale, soften all the way down. Notice how you feel, give yourself a shoulder roll. Now, I think those of us who are in this class now can do that standing without a problem. Let's try it. So bring yourself up to standing. And we're gonna do the same incremental lifting of the hands. And this time there's an opportunity to strengthen your feet at the same time. So find your mountain pose before we begin. Feel that groundedness. Remember, remember to get as best you can those bean shaped feet. You can start with the feet parallel, bring the weight forward, lift the heels up, turn them in a bit. And then as you set them down, there's a lot more uh, activity in your feet that those arches are all activated. Okay, and that bean shape. Let your knees and hips be as soft and bendy. You can shake around a little bit if that feels good, a little rebounding if that feels good. Now settle into your mountain pose, bring the weight mostly to your heels and feel your groundedness. You're part of the earth, you're connected to the earth. Feel that now as you breathe in and out. You're connected to the earth and you're connected to the sun. And it's all very ethereal and, and uh, subtle, but it's, it's there, okay? So now we're gonna do that moving mountain in increments. And if it, you feel confident and safe, you can incrementally lift your heels slightly in each station, okay? So let's try it out. So find your groundedness, feel that mountain pose. And as you're ready, exhale completely. Now shift the weight forward, inhale and bring your arms just a little bit out and maybe those heels have barely lifted up off the floor. Exhale in place. Inhale a little bit more. The arms are reaching out a little bit farther away from the body. Exhale, soften a little bit in place. Inhale a little bit higher. And here's where maybe your palms are beginning to face forward. Exhale, soften. Inhale, and now maybe your palms are almost uh, uh, facing the ceiling. Exhale in place. And then inhale all the way up, feel that stretch. And this time as you exhale, soften all the way back down. Bring the weight to your heels and wiggle your toes a bit. You can wiggle your fingers as well. Okay, so we've done it once. Let's do it three times. And each time maybe you'll, uh, it'll be easier. So let's do it again. Exhale completely. Inhale, the weight shifts forward, and maybe your heels come a tiny bit up off the floor. Exhale in place. Inhale, a little bit higher. Exhale, maybe you'll dip down a little bit. Inhale, here's where my hands begin to face forward. Exhale in place. Inhale, now my palms have rotated so they're facing more up. Exhale in place, inhale all the way up, and exhale slowly releasing all the way back down. Shift your weight to your heels and wiggle those toes. Okay, a little rebounding, shake it out, notice how you feel, and we're gonna do it one more time. So from a standing mountain, Exhale completely. Inhale, shifting forward, bringing the arms out a little bit, and maybe those heels come slightly off the floor. Exhale in place. Inhale a little higher. Exhale in place. Inhale, are your arms beginning to rotate? Exhale in place. 
Inhale a little bit more. Now maybe those palms are facing the ceiling. Exhale in place. Inhale all the way up and your palms are facing the midline. And as you exhale, soften all the way down. Good, bring the weight to the heels and wiggle those toes a little bit. Good, we didn't do that um, kneading action. Do just a little bit of that right now. And you can add your hands with that kneading action. So just a little bit of that action for your feet. We like those feet to be strong and they're getting stronger with the action we just did and this kneading action as well. Okay, shake it out, keep breathing. Now let's do a balance pose. So how about just kind of a free form, bring your leg forward, either with your knee bent or extend the leg, okay? So you can use your chair, or if you have a staff, you can use a staff. I'm gonna use a chair today. And I'm gonna start by shifting to the right side, grounding as I exhale. And then with an inhale, peeling that left heel up off the floor, the knee bends, and then releasing the foot from the floor. Just rotate that ankle. So let the knee be kind of relaxed, the knee stays bent, and just rotate that ankle on the left side. Keep breathing. If you wanna do something with your hand or hands, maybe you'll match whatever's happening in the leg. Does that work? I think if I practiced a little bit, I would be able to match, but now it feels a little wonky, but it's kind of cool. I like that. Just doing a little rotation in both the wrist and the ankle on that left side as you're ready, return to your mountain. Notice how you feel. Notice how that left side feels compared to the right. Keep breathing. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So <clears throat> with an inhale, shift to the left. Exhale, feel that groundedness. And as you're ready, peel that right heel up off the floor. The knee stays bent for this action. And you can rotate wrist and ankle. Maybe this time they're working together a little bit better. <laughs> Keep breathing. Shake it out. Find that nice tall pose. You're standing on one leg. You can stay tall. And as you're ready, return to your mountain and notice how it feels. A little rebounding. Shake it out. Keep breathing. Now, let's do another balance pose, but this time, like, bring the leg back. So use your prop here, shift to the right, ground into that right foot, and then rotate your left palm uh, out so the thumb is pointing back and see if you can lift your foot and either um, grab the ankle or the instep. Your shoulder is opening, keep breathing. You can press gently back on that leg. This is a beginning of a dancer's pose. Notice how you feel. And as you're ready, release. Come back to your mountain and shake it out a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. So just a simple lift, opening up that palm. So now I'm gonna to shift to the left, feel that groundedness, open up my palm and pick up my foot. How does that feel? Stay nice and tall, keep breathing. About three breaths at least. And as you're ready, release that foot. Notice how you feel. So that was the beginning of a dancer's pose. And here's another way to approach a dancer's pose against a wall. So if you have a wall, you can stretch your right arm up 
come close to the wall and stretch that right arm up. And if you have a wall like me, it's really convenient because it's, it's just kind of a wall in the middle of the uh, floor. And I can actually grip and hold the wall. So it makes it easy to once again, open up that left hand, lift that left foot, reach for it and stretch the right side as my left side is um, in this dancer's configuration. Breathe. Feel that stretch on the right side. Don't collapse in the left side. Stay strong. And that's enough of that. Release, relax, and then the other side. So I'm gonna come over here and see if this works on this side. Bringing my left arm up the wall, getting close to the wall, feel that stretch on the left side of the body, opening up the palm of the right side, lifting the foot. And I find that my ankle is where my hand wants to be. And just feel that stretch. About three breaths, feeling that stretch, strengthening the standing leg. And as you're ready, release, relax, return to your mountain. Notice how you feel. Maybe get a sip of water. I need a sip of water. Okay. So I know you love balance poses. So let's do another one. Um, which is something that we've done a lot, our hero three. Using your chair or a ledge or a wall or whatever works for you, that this would work for me too, but I'm using the chair today. Let's find that nice tall stance. Now, if you're leaning forward, you wanna make sure you're hinging at the hips and bring your feet a little bit wide and there's that bendiness at the knees and hips, right? So let's shift to the right side, feel that groundedness, and then just pick up that left leg and fold into a hero three kind of pose. Breathe. So now flex that left ankle and reach through the ankle. Feel that stretch. Keep breathing. Your torso is stretching a little bit as you reach through the ankle. Keep breathing. And as you're ready, return upright. Shift your weight to both feet. Notice how you feel. Keep breathing. And let's do the same thing on the other side. So reach for that surface, shift to the left, and pick up the right leg, reaching back through that heel, fold into your hero three. Keep breathing. About three breaths there. And as you're ready, return to your mountain. Little rebounding, shake it out, keep breathing. Now let's do our leg lifts, okay? So if you like to circulate the legs, let's do it. If you don't like, if it doesn't work for you, um, just bring them out to the side. When you're bringing the leg out to the side, you're working on that gluteus medius, okay? And if you can circulate it in any circle, that's great. And then when you're bringing it more back, you're working on that larger gluteus maximus. So any way that works for you, do it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do two reps of this. Bring the left leg out and either just out to the side or circle. And let's do about 14 circles or lifts. So circulate around seven times one way and seven times the other way. Now 
And once you're finished with those circles or those lifts, 14 lifts or seven each way circles, stand upright, notice how you feel. So give yourself that momentary uh, noticing in between. And then let's do the other side. So we'll go back and forth. So now the right leg. So come into your stance and that right leg comes out, either circulating seven times one direction. And then seven times the other direction or just out to the side 14 times. And then stand upright. Notice how you feel. Keep breathing. Now, one thing we didn't do today that I like to do is when you're standing in your mountain, press down gently on the tops of your hips using your shoulders as a, a suspension point. Stretch your spine a little bit manually here. Breathe. Stretch. And release. Okay, so now let's do another Oh, well, we've got to do the back part, right? So the back part of these leg lifts. So find your comfortable stance, bring the left leg back, and maybe it's just tiny, tiny circles. Seven times one way and seven times the other way. Feel it in those gluteals. Good, stand upright, notice how you feel. Nice tall spine. And then the other side. So shifting to the left, bring that right leg out, circulating it seven times one direction. And then reversing direction, or just kicking it out seven, uh, 14 times. Standing upright, notice how you feel. Give yourself a shoulder roll, both sides. Maybe stretch your spine again. Keep breathing. And even give your neck a little encouragement to be long and stacked. Good, shake it out. Roll those shoulders. Keep breathing. Okay, so we've done a couple of leg lifts on each side. Do you wanna do one more or something else? I don't know. Let's just play, <laughs> just play. Okay, so you guys are all good at all kinds of good stuff. So let's do one simple sun salutation. Ready for that? Katie's going to have a nap. Okay, you can have a nap if you want while we do the sun salutation. Um, that, now, this is going to be easy. If you want to use a chair instead of getting on the floor, that's fine. Do your modification uh, using a chair. Okay, if you want to do the whole thing on the floor, the full plank, you can follow me. So again, if you want to modify by using a chair, please do that. You can do all these things with the chair, right? Instead of on the floor, if that's your preference. I'm going to do it on the floor, starting near the front of my mat, finding that mountain pose, nice tall spine. Roll the shoulders open. Exhale completely. Here we go. Inhale, arms lift. There may be a slight lean back. As you exhale, you're going to hinge at the hips and come into that standing forward bend. Maybe you have your chair there and you're using your chair. As you're ready, shift to the left and bring that right foot back. Lunge. Now, some will like to bring the knee down. I'm not doing that these days. This is my lunge. Keep breathing as you're ready. Both hands are on the floor. Bring that left leg back and lift your hips up into a down face dog. Nice long spine, releasing the neck here. 
Let's stay in down face dog for three breaths. You can bicycle those hips a little bit, bending the knees one at a time. And it's fine to have the heels way up off the floor and the knees bent in a down face dog. Keep breathing as you inhale, feel the length in this pose. As you exhale, bring yourself into a plank. And again, you can do this on the chair. Keep breathing. Here, I'm gonna bring my knees down and then scoop a little bit. So I'll bring my hips back and then scoop down my chin and my chest might graze the floor and then the hips come down and settle. Now a baby cobra, just focus on lifting any amount, a tiny bit from that lower edge of the rib cage. And as you exhale, soften down again, tuck those toes. We're gonna come again into a down face dog. Walk those feet to wherever your down face dog feels best. Release that neck, keep breathing. We shifted to the right, uh, left. Let's do that again and bring that right leg up. Stretch as you inhale. Right leg is stretching, three-legged dog. As you're ready, bring it forward, however you need to get it there. And find that lunge again. Keep breathing. With an inhale, you can gently stretch that right knee a bit as you rock back. And then exhale, step forward into your standing forward bend again. And maybe you're using a chair here, whatever works best. As you're ready, release down with an exhale. And you can bring your arms into cactus and inhale, lifting that long spine, supported with the breath. If you like, you can stretch your arms up and then bring them into a prayer pose in between sides. Notice how you feel. And now let's do the other side. As you inhale, stretch those arms up. You may wanna lean back ever so slightly. Exhale, hinge at the hips, dive into your standing forward bend, releasing down, keep breathing. We're gonna shift this time to the right and step back with the left, find that lunge, keep breathing, and then bring the right foot back, down face dog, nice long spot pose, breathe, come into plank as you're ready, keep breathing, nice long pose, bring those shoulders to home, bring your knees down, and how about let's stretch back into a puppy pose, so bring those arms forward, and just lower your hips, reach back with your hips, lower your head towards the floor, feel the stretch, And then gently coming forward, you can let your elbows come onto the floor and stretch your legs back, bring your torso down onto the floor. Now a baby cobra with an inhale, lift, concentrating on the lower edge of the rib cage, just coming minutely up off the floor. As you exhale, soften down again, tuck those toes, and we're gonna move back to it, down face dog. Keep breathing. We shifted to the right. Let's do that again and do a left-legged, three-legged dog as you stretch. With that inhale, lifting that left leg up and exhale, bring that knee forward into that high or low lunge. Whatever feels best for you, you can bring your knee down if that feels right. Keep breathing and as you inhale, gently rock back, stretching that left knee a bit. And as you exhale, bring that foot forward. Here you are in your standing forward bend again. Exhale here and bring your arms into cactus and inhale. Long spine comes up, supported with the breath. Then exhale with your arms in a prayer pose and just notice how you feel. Keep breathing. Okay, let's come onto the floor now. And we'll do a few things on the floor. Get yourself ready for your inversion with your knees up on a chair and come on down onto the floor and stretch your spine. Hey, little doggy. 
and we'll leave that. So give your spine a stretch. If it feels good, press gently down on the tops of your hips, anchor the rib cage in, and then stretch your neck again. It never hurts to stretch that neck more. Bring that head up a little bit and keep the neck relaxed in its stretched state. Okay, now let's take those hands and shake them out a bit. Shake them out, maybe wiggle those fingers, rotate the wrists, and then take your left hand and slide it up your right to the shoulder. And give your right shoulder, I mean your left shoulder, a little rub. Do the same thing on the other side. So the left hand slides up the right arm and to the shoulder. Give it a little rub. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Shake those hands out again. And now cross right over left and give yourself a hug. So with this hug, my intention is for you to give more flexibility to the shoulders. So maybe you can move your hands in a way that kind of stretches those shoulders away from each other just a little bit. See if you can stretch those shoulders away from each other a little bit, any amount. And then you can do the same thing on the other side. Hugging the other way. Any amount more flexibility in that shoulder area, the arms, the hands. You can take any tension you might have been able to gather into your hands and shake it out. Now let's bend those knees and bring the feet flat to the floor. Maybe you already had your knees bent, that's great. Snuggle around, keep those shoulders at home here. And as you're ready, you can gently with an inhale, pick those feet up off the floor. And as you exhale, any amount, let the knees come towards the body. Inhaling, the knees come above the hips and you can use your hands to gently guide those knees if it feels good. Exhale, draw the knees towards the shoulders. What? What do you want, little doggy? Inhale. Exhale. And as you're ready, now with the knees up above the hips, how does that feel? If it feels good, Keep them there and rock a little side to side. So any amount, keeping the spine stacked, keeping your head as best you can on the floor. So it's rolling side to side too. And your whole body stays, your, your uh, spine stays stacked, right? You're moving the whole unit of your torso from side to side a bit. So when you move to the left, your right side, shoulder and hips lift up off the floor on that side. And then when you move to the right, the left shoulder and hips lift up off the floor. Do that a little bit more while I let the dog out. Any amount more rolling side to side. Now the problem with letting the dog out is I need to let her back in when she's ready. Anyway, you're on the floor, that's good. Now, as you feel complete with that side to side rolling, let's stretch the legs out again and do some side stretches. So rest a moment here after you stretch your legs out, notice how you feel. And now we're gonna take the right arm, lift it up, and stretch the right arm and the right leg away from each other. Now, if it would be fun, develop that relationship between the wrist and the ankle and flex wrist and ankle as you inhale and stretch and exhale, soften. Now this time, point the fingers and point the toes as you inhale, feel the stretch and exhale, soften. One more time, let's do it with the wrist and 
ankle flexed and see how it feels different. Inhale, stretch, wrist and ankle flexed, exhale, soften. Now wrist and ankle relaxed and stretching through the fingers and toes again. Inhale, right side stretches, fingers and toes away from the core. Exhale, soften. Now bring that right arm down. Just notice how you feel on the right side. And then pick up that left arm. And let's do the same thing there. Inhale, stretch. Let's start by reaching through the toes and fingers. Exhale, soften. Now flexing the ankle and wrist. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, soften. Pointing toes and fingers. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, soften. Flexing ankle and wrist. Stretch. As you inhale, even reaching through that heel and the wrist. And exhale, soften. Feels different, doesn't it? Let's bring that arm down. Just notice how you feel for a moment. And then let's do opposite limbs. So take your right arm up. And if it feels better to have it out, do it out. If anything hurts, modify where your positioning is so it doesn't hurt, okay? So if you wanna bring it up or out, you choose. And inhale, let's flex the ankle and foot again. Cross the body stretching. So the left leg and the right arm are stretching away from each other as you inhale with the ankle and wrist flexed and exhale, soften. Now inhale, point fingers and toes and stretch again with the inhale. Exhale, soften. Let's do four. So again, with the ankle and wrist flexed, inhale, stretch. It feels different, doesn't it? When you flex those parts of your body, exhale, soften. Now pointing toes and fingers, inhale, stretch. Exhale, soften. How do you feel? Bring your arm alongside your body again. Relax a moment. Just notice, can you feel that residual relationship between the right side and the left? Just notice. Now let's do the other side. So picking up that left arm. And the first one we're gonna flex, as you inhale, flex the left arm, uh, wrist and the right angle, ankle and stretch. And exhale, soften. Now pointing, toes and fingers, stretch as you inhale. Exhale, soften. Again, with the flexed wrist and ankle, inhale, stretch through the heel and the wrist. Exhale, soften. One more time through the toes and fingers. Inhale, stretch across the body. Feel that relationship across the body. And exhale, soften. Let's bend those knees. Bring the feet flat to the floor or the uh, whatever you're on and walk them as far apart as your hips are wide or even wider. And do a little bit of windshield wiper if windshield wiper feels good. So for today, let's swing as your knees come over to the right side swing your left arm up and away from you a bit and feel that stretch the whole left side of your body. And coming back, you can move your arm back to closer to your body. Now the knees are gonna go over to the left and I'm gonna stretch my right arm up and away a bit. If that feels good, try that. So it feels really good to stretch this whole side of the body, perhaps for you as well as me. And as you exhale, soften. The arms can move to where they're most comfortable. And then the other side. So as my knees come over to the right, I'm stretching that left arm up and away a bit. And I may be turning my face towards the left as well. Ah, oh, that feels good. And then relax that arm and move the knees over to the other side, lifting that right arm up and stretch it away. 
any amount of it feels good. Feel that stretch. Let's do one more time on each side. Knees going to the right, left arm stretching up and away, or maybe it's just away rather than up. You choose what feels best in your body. Keep breathing. Bringing the knees back to center. One more time, bringing them over to the left and feeling that stretch in the armpit or wherever you might feel it as you stretch your arm away, any amount. And relax, bringing the knees back to center. Walk those feet just as far apart as your hips are wide. Let's do a couple of half bridges here. So let's just keep the arms on the floor this time without lifting them up. We did a lot of lifting and stretching of the arms already. So as you're ready, using those gluteal muscles, lift those hips up, float them up with an inhale. And as you exhale, feel them relax and float your hips back down to the floor. Let's do that a couple more times, inhaling. Squeeze the glutes, lifting those hips up. Feel that squeeze. And as you exhale, soften and relax back down to the floor. One more time, inhale, squeeze. Feel those gluteals, lifting your hips up. If it feels good, stay here for three breaths. As you exhale, maybe you'll dip a little bit down as those gluteals relax. And then inhale, squeeze again. Exhale, soften. Staying in the pose one more time. Breathe, squeeze and lift. And this time as you exhale, soften your hips back down to the floor. Now, maybe just a moment of Baddha Konasana would feel good for you. Bring the soles of your feet together and let those knees relax out to the side. Okay, so now we've run out of time and it's time to do your inversion. So let's take the five minutes of relaxation in an inversion today. So get yourself close to your chair. And lift those knees to rest on the chair seat. Okay, maybe you have a pillow or bolster, something to put to rest the upper body, neck and head on. That's always good. If that feels right for you, you should use that. And I am going to go ahead and stop the recording now. Thank you. If you're watching this recording later, you'll enjoy your inversion for about five minutes and you'll have to monitor yourself coming out of the pose. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording now.